I've seen it around Spike Island, around the harbour side, around the Bridge Valley Road or the Portway. At first I thought it was just some kind of, you know, somebody having a bit of fun with uh, drawing on the pavements, maybe sort of just, uh, it was leading somewhere. The first time I saw it, it was halfway down a pavement and I assumed it was a cycle path. And then as I saw it starting to kind of wiggle around a little bit, I thought it can't be. But yeah, today's when I actually found out what it was. It's a spark. The high water line is a spark for conversation and also to start discussing solutions and then ideally to bring together all the people who are connected by this line in a way that they heretofore we may have never seen their connection. My name is Eve Mosher and I did the high water line project in New York City in 2007. And the original idea behind the project was to really understand what the local impacts of climate change were on my own community. As I did the project, I found out that it was a really useful tool for having conversations about our vulnerability and start to think about what solutions might be on a really local level and how we're going to take on climate change in the future. This September in Bristol, community members who live, work or find community somehow within a flood risk area of the city um, join together to take a sports pitch marker around the edge of the flood risk zone and over a two-week period demarcate an extensive area of the city using this chalk marker to create a long chalk line. Bristol has the second highest tidal range in the world which has been very well managed for a long time but there's increasing uncertainty around the extent to which this will be affected by climate change and how it will interact with other kinds of flooding in the city. During January, February and March last year we had a flood barrier at the end of our road because we had extremely high tides and storm surges. There's some pubs down the way near the weir and they completely flooded a couple of years ago. We saw the tides in the winter, the tides came very high and we saw in, I think it was February 2009, there was a very high flood as well. The most amazing thing about this project has been the conversations, which is what it's all about really. So while we're pushing the chalker along, people come up and they start asking us what we're doing. And so we explain that this is a high water line. It is a line that's based on current data, which is a representation of where water would come to if we didn't have our current flood defences. Once people understand that, you see lights in their eyes, it's amazing. The sort of lead into the project was a period where there are an amazing number of meetings and workshops and events that Izzy Tar managed and enabled people to really feel some ownership of a project which is in the end of the day going to affect them in their communities. When I went to Bristol, my excitement about the project really was seeing how very, very local it was. I think it's one of the most local projects I've ever worked on, where you literally saw people open their front door, walk out into their front yard, and there was a line along their pavement. So we were pushing the line along, and people came around the corner, and they said, we know what you're doing, before they started talking before we did, and just the other way around. So it was really nice to know that people actually had worked out what we were doing, and they were kind of very supportive, and they were local, and part of their community. Instead of uh, making people think, which is a phrase that people often use about climate change art, I think it really got people acting and talking to each other um, on their own terms. The fact that it was a collaboration between uh, an artist who lived remotely and community members uh, meant that the art was actually produced by people who didn't consider themselves artists or performance artists and ultimately the project uses art as a tool to work towards something practical and, and to open up a space for conversations in the places where they need to happen. I was actually flooded as a child and it took my parents years to get over it really. So it's, um, it's quite a damning thing, you know, quite a debilitating effect. So. She just said it was the most awful experience and the kind of mud and sludge and everything that's in all the way over the, the ground floor of the house and taking years to get rid of the smells. So what I'm hoping it'll happen for residents is that their ideas and their noticing of what the line means to them, how it will keep them safe, their houses, their property, their children, will become more aware of the possibilities. And they'll go and look for their own solutions that they can own, belong to part of their community, 
and that maybe one day, if there is a big flood, they'll look back at high water line and think, well, you helped us to start looking. Thank you.